Marcus. Someone's very scared about what she's going to say. And someone's been taking pot shots at Charlie Driscoll. Well, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. Listen, why the bad blood? Look, let's just say being disabled uh, has done nothing for a personality. What is your role with Charlie exactly? What are you? Minder? Bodyguard? I'm a physiotherapist. Did they give you any names on who she was going to inform on? No, but she did tell me that Charlie's brother's in town, Robert Driscoll, a.k.a. Boy. He flew in from the Bahamas nine weeks ago. It's probably where she keeps her nest egg. Money, diamonds, passports, whatever she's got to hide. Jeff, Charlie is planning a runner. It's all adding up. Charlie! Why would a criminal like Willie Bostick, there's no history of violence, try and shoot you, Miss Driscoll? You know perfectly well I'm on trial for murder in two days. There's a lot of people getting nervous. What, worried you might do a deal? They misjudge me. I've never been the type to kiss and tell. Well, that's not what I've heard. I'd like it on the record that Chief Inspector Hawker bears a grudge against me. Oh. He has done so for a considerable length of time. Why was Detective Sergeant Christie inside your house? Jack and I just had breakfast together. He'd had a rough night. Charlie, hey, don't try and turn it into something it wasn't. You were under surveillance because it was suspected that you were about to leave the country. In your opinion, was Detective Christie's life in danger when he fired at Willie Bostick? Willie Bostick was about to shoot me. Jack Christie saved my life. Charlie! You all right, Jack? I'm going to hell. What are you working on? Oh, the money exchange hold-up. I mean, if we're going to solve this, we might be able to prove that Charlie Driscoll was involved in it or not. Who have you got there? Old associates of Charlie's. It's pretty obvious who the thieves were, Jack. One of them had to be Boy, Charlie's brother, and the other one had to be a guy that was connected to Charlie. That's called basic police work. You know what that is? Jack. You know, if he pulled surveillance off Charlie, like Hawker said, none of this would have happened. But then Charlie Driscoll would be dead. <laughs> and that'd be a tragedy. Where are you going? Oh, I'm just going to go and do some basic police work. Charlie's playing games with you, Jack. The way she's describing it to IA, mate, you are a knight in shining armour. But no other choice, Jeff. She's the one in control here, Jack. She's the one pulling the strings. She's pulling everyone's strings. Her brothers, the physios, Willie's. Helen's tracked down fat man's wife and son. His name was Willie. Oh, it's a bloody mess, whatever it is. Why would Willie... A man with a family. Try and kill Charlie Driscoll. It's so out of character. Someone's backed him into a corner. I'll tell you what, mate. I'm going to get Charlie in the court on that murder charge, and we both know she's going to roast you. That all? Let's go. It's in a hurry. <laughs> Neaten yourself up a bit, Jack. Make a bit of an effort, mate. Jack, I A, they're ready for you. Hello, Dylan. These little chats have come to mean so much to me, Jack. Take a seat. So what did Charlie give you for breakfast, Jack? Fruit. So you admit that you work for Charlie Driscoll? 
So what? I've done time for a two, and it was yonks ago. So where were you? 7am uh, yesterday morning. Probably halfway up Forest Hill Road. I go for a run every morning. I leave at 6.30 and I'm back at 7.30, which gives me enough time for a shower before I have to start work at 8. That's when Bucket comes in. You can ask him if you like. Hey, what are you doing? Go mix some of that bog up, will ya? What are you standing there for? Just stand around and do nothing? So what's all this about, anyhow? The money exchange at Circular Key was robbed yesterday. We have reason to believe that Charlie Driscoll's involved in it. <laughs> what's she going to do stuck in a wheelchair? Sounds like she'll make a good paperweight, if you ask me. Sounds like you keep in touch. How do you know she's in a wheelchair? Sounds like I read the newspapers, mate. You both should do some more reading besides those comic books. You know Charlie Driscoll's butler's in town? What? Little boy's he? Who cares? You've met his girlfriend? She's a flight attendant. So what? She's a flight attendant. <laughs> he always liked him dumb, didn't he? So have you ever met her? No, nah, never seen her in my life. You know something? When I get my next date, I'm going to bring her up here for a Sunday afternoon of fishing, I think. And this is great. That's if you get a date. <laughs> and what's to say she likes fishing? Who doesn't like fishing, mate? Everyone loves fishing. It's the perfect date. You know, you get to sit down, have time to talk, check the scene. Look at this black idiot, will you? Hold your coffee, mate. This wash is big. This is hot. Ah, damn. Hey, slow down! Slow down! Gav, that's girl's in trouble. The wake's gonna tip her over. It's gonna slice that up. Can you see her? <laughs> there she is, she's over there. Just there. <laughs> you okay? You all right? Tell me you're okay. I'm taking her to the boat. Just hold on to me, and we'll get you in, all right? Just try and breathe and relax. Hold on, mate! The skull wasn't mine. It belongs, um, it belonged to a friend. Yeah. She made me swear I'd be careful. <laughs> I should have stuck to horses. You ride as well? Mm, yeah, but not much since I moved to Sydney. Sexy, do you want to get this poor woman some dry clothes? No, I'll get them. You won't know where to look. OK, thanks. Sorry. No, it's all right. A bit of water never hurt. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from Gugandra. A bushy, I knew it. <laughs> Me too. What, really? Yeah. <laughs> so how are you finding the locals around here? I oh, really went home. What happened? <laughs> uh, some bozo and a cruiser tipped her out. Get a rego number? Why? Wow. Yeah. Well, what do you Oh, kind of need double. All right. Coba. You can get changed upstairs if you like. Oh, OK. She killed that detective, didn't she? Jack's partner? No, 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 she didn't kill her. One of her henchmen did, though. Tell the flight attendant, of course I'm listening. Good. Right, Interpol said that she was clean as a whistle, no sign of cash or diamonds. OK, maybe Charlie uh, cancelled the run. All right, but what else did they say? I mean, how did she react when she was searched, right? Was she surprised? Was she frightened? No, they didn't say anything else, Jack, just that she was clean. They had no reason to detain well, her. Thanks, Helen, but look, if Charlie is going to do a runner, then she needs money and she needs to get it out of the country. If she's going to run. Look, this flight attendant is her best chance. 
So why cancel the money run? Uh, because of you, because you've been on her for 24 hours a day. Yeah, but Charlie still needs the money. What's she going to do? She's going to head off to Guatemala or wherever hell she's going to without a pot to piss in? But I don't think she cancelled the run. Where's the money? OK, so, so, so you think this flight attendant has taken the money? Well, look, it's a big temptation. All the, all the diamonds... Double-cross Charlie Driscoll. Big mistake. She's a flight attendant, Jack. Jack, you shouldn't be doing this. What happened? You run out of cupboard space. Well, my brother's girlfriend turfed him out. He's the one who thinks he's Jimmy Olsen. Oh, no, journalism, that was last year. The year before that, town planning. Uh, this year, it's arts law. Sounds like he's got a good grip on reality. Yeah, how about you, Jack? How's your grip? Yeah, you, you just shot someone. You should be on restricted duties. I, I don't know what it's like to kill someone, right? And if you want to talk about this... Don't say you can imagine. Willie had a six-year-old son. I've changed his life forever. This is harassment. So call your lawyer. Hey. Why are you doing this? My sister can't walk. She's no threat to you. Just back off her. Huh? Give him a break, boy. Jack's had a bad day. Saving my life isn't something a cop rushes to have on his CV. How's the foot going? Andrea Tell was picked up at Miami airport this morning. Do I know her? Her bags were empty. She had no diamonds, no cash, no little nest egg for you when you scarf her, Charlie. Do you tell her to cancel a run? Andrea Tell. Isn't she that flight attendant you screw sometimes for duty free? <laughs> Charlie's one cool customer. Her brother's a bit upset about something. I think I'm right. I think the host has ripped Charlie off. Do you think the uh, boy's involved? Hard to tell. Oh. They chased up that list of Charlie's foot soldiers. Yeah. Narrowed it down to three. Uh, two are dead. One's interstate. All the rest had alibis for the money exchange robbery. Yeah. You feeling all right, Jack? Uh, listen, how'd you go with the host to you? Uh, when should you be back in Sydney? Flight's due in tomorrow. Maybe you should go home. You know, you've been sleeping in your car all night. Yeah, yeah, I'm starting to pong a bit. Yeah. Right, so that's the only set of spare keys I have. Do not lose them. I won't. All right, so how are you getting home? You want to catch a bus or something? Well, I thought maybe you'd lend me your car. Hey, Donna, what? Well, well, otherwise, I'll have to walk, and I haven't even got 20 cents to my name. And then I'll be too tired, so I won't be able to study, and then I'll fail uni, so I won't be able to get a job, and I'll end up on the street. Donna, this is my brother James. Donna. Yeah, we met already. Okay, so you wanna you wanna borrow my car? Well, well, why don't you just borrow some money? From you? I thought I'd have better luck getting your car. Oh. Okay, this comes back in one piece. You hear me? You are the girl. Yes. Yeah. Ugh.
so stupid. I'm looking there. What do you think? Right, where is it? Stupid. Where is it? Then? I don't know. I don't have it. <laughs> I can't believe. It. Oh, I, I, I didn't. I didn't go through the details clearly, did I? I, I I'm I sorry. I'm exactly following what I... directly. She's a bloody guest. Hey, <clears throat> having a little welcome home bash. Oh, sorry, uh, my name's Detective Jack Christie. I'm with the Sydney Water Police. Right, I'd like to ask you a few questions. That's me there, a little picture. <laughs> See you later, all right? <sighs> I hear you had a bit of bother coming through Miami. Is that what you and Boy were arguing about? Look, I'm, um, I'm pretty tired. I just got off the flight, so... Oh, that's OK. You go and have a shower, have a drink, freshen up, whatever. I'll, I'll just sit here. I'll wait. Is this the bag that was searched? How long have you known Boy? Long enough, a few years. Right. You know his sister, Charlie? No, but Boy's told me all about her, all right? Well, listen, let me fill you in on a few fine details, right? If you cross Charlie, Andrea, you're dead. Because that's what she does. That's how she runs a business. Do you understand? Now, if you want to... I've got a card here somewhere. Uh, yep. If you want to call me any time, OK? Any time at all. You understand? Great, thanks. Boys don't like Charlie, so... Ah. This is still about the car, no, isn't it? it's not about the car. It's about the shower situation. Hello, Michael. Hello, Alex. Situation in my house when you're staying with me. She's pissed off at me because some woman ran into the back of me last night. What, in her car? Yeah. Did you get the woman's address? No, no. that's the sticking point. The woman drove off. And you don't believe him, Alex. <laughs> Look, I'm getting Dolph back from the garage uh, today. Dolph. You can use it until yours Dolph? is fixed. I'm not calling your car Dolph. It's I... stupid. You will if you want it to start in the morning. Sykes! Sorry, uh, Gavin! Someone to see you. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, I just thought I'd bring back the things you let me. Oh, thanks. So, did you, uh, did you end up telling your friend about the accident? Yeah. She wants me to pay for it. Oh. It's 10,000 bucks. I had no idea. Yeah, these skulls are expensive. Yeah, well, I told her it wasn't my fault. Not that it seems to matter. Yeah. So, unless I find the guy who capsized me, I've got to wear it. I haven't got that kind of money. Well, come upstairs and I'll grab you a coffee, huh? Mm -hmm. hey, we've got extensive resources here. You just might be able to catch this guy who, uh, who owns the boat, so... Oh, yeah? How are you going to do that, Sightsy? You got no rego? No ID? No chance? Jack? Yeah, look, this is the third time I've left this message. Chopper, ring him immediately. Thank you. Who is he? Man, it's not as though I don't want to go. I just got to handle things in my own way. I mean, I don't mean any disrespect. I hope you understand that. I've just got a bit on a plate at the moment. But I, I don't know if you can see all these things that are happening to me down here, but... I shot this bloke yesterday. His name's Willies. You can't miss him. He's a big fat bloke. You look after him, will you, Rachel? He's a pretty good bloke. Wentworth at the dogs time you had this bloke under surveillance. Yeah, he lent us a couple of men. So do you reckon Charlie Driscoll's up to something? Well, I'm the only one who seems to think so. Uh, there's multiple stab wounds, multiple lacerations. A bit of a mess, really. Look, if it's any help. Oh, God. He was alive three hours ago. It's Boyd Driscoll. Narrows the time frame. There's not enough blood here. Had to have happened somewhere else. Charlie's not going to like this. I'm just bracing myself for the overtime. I reckon there'll be some payback. 
I need to talk to you in private. <sighs> we haven't got any secrets here, Jack, you know that. Boy's dead. They found his body a couple of hours ago, I'm sorry. No, leave me alone. Look, homicide are going to want to know about boy's movements and... Get out of here! Jesus! He should never have come back here. He wasn't a gangster. He did the job at the money exchange, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Good for Charlie. So who was his partner? Who did he pull it off with? He didn't tell me. Do you want to have some of that? Have a drink? Yeah. Right, so you met, you met at the Bondi flat. And you gave him a, a wheel on bag yeah, and a key. So what was the key for? Um, locker at the airport. Right, so boy, he, he filled this bag with the diamonds and the money and he left it at the airport yeah, for you to pick up. Yeah. I thought they had me when the police stopped me in Miami. It was full of magazines, so... Do you think Boy set you up? Do you think he, do you think he took the money and set you up? No. No, no, he wouldn't do it to me. He wouldn't do it to Charlie. He loved her. It's the only reason he was here. Because he loved her. How'd Charlie take the news? How do you think she took it? He was her brother. I know. Uh, Jack, uh... You know what I think you should do, Jack? Just work out if you want to lock Charlie up or you want to elope with her. It's simple. I just feel sorry for her. And, uh, the people she's had killed, do you uh, feel sorry for them? Have you finished, Alex? Ah, uh, listen, Jack, did you get anything out of the flight attendant? Uh, like, do you think she knocked off uh, Charlie's nest egg, you know, double-crossed the Driscolls? Not unless she's the world's best actress. She was adamant the boy wasn't involved either. I'm less convinced about that. OK, so she finds out her brother's ripped her off, so she whacks him. Charlie Driscoll did not kill her brother. She loved her brother. It's about the only thing she did love. The woman is stuck in a wheelchair. The cash and diamonds are her future, right? Her only future. She finds out her brother has done a dash with her cash. I mean, what do you really think she's going to do here? Hey, I mean, Michael Corleone, he loved Fredo, but he still whacked him. You didn't see the body. You didn't. What's that all about? Oh, look, I am just sick of all the mixed messages I am getting, right? One minute, one minute he hates Charlie's guts, the next minute he's running to her defence. Michael, she is a killer. Give me a break. Give me a break. Alex never told me she had a brother. Well, here I am. I do exist. There you go, James. Aha. Uh -huh. Thanks, Helen. What are they? Just old police journals. Saves me dumping them. Uni project. I need to know how you people think. No, it was definitely a V8. A cruiser. Yeah, that's right. Is he still going on about the cruiser? No, no, all right. I'm only guessing now, okay? Don't you think if he was really desperate to get a date with this girl, he'd find an easier way? Oh, come on. I think it's sweet. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Thanks for your help. Bye. Did you go, Sherlock? Yeah, no good. Yeah. Try B. B for boat hire. Ha <laughs> You want to me? Charlie insisted on identifying her brother's body. It's badly mutilated. Well, let's hope she's not out for revenge. Well, you can bet she knows who it is. I reckon it's the partner from the money exchange, Robbery Jack. Well, boy's death is up to homicide now. They can get all the relevant information. Make sure you pass on any ideas, Nick. Sure. What about you, Jack? Uh, you want to drag Alex along and go for a drink? Oh, no, thanks, Mick. She's all yours. Oh, you know what I mean. So... Oh, bless him. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, Chief. Listen, Alex is like water on a rock, Jack. What do you mean? Takes a millennium? We'll see. Good night. Good night, Helen. Good night. You coming to Rachel's memorial? No, I don't think I'm going to go. Hey, it's been a bit weird lately, hasn't it? Driscoll back on the scene. One year anniversary of Rachel's death. Yeah, 
Anyway, I'll, I'll see you. Thanks. What's going on with you, Jack? You're trying to keep it together at work, but really, what's going on? I just shot a man. No, before that. Way before that. Don't piss me off, Jack. Talk to me. When you're ready. I hear your court case has been pushed back. Compassionate grounds. Does that mean you're not going to disappear tomorrow? We've known each other a long time, Jack. Most of it bad times, but history is history. I've tried hard to hate you, Jack, but I just can't. Maybe I'm running out of steam. Oh, come on, Charlie. I know you too well. You never give up. You know who killed him, don't you? Come on, Charlie. The boy was doing robberies for you. And whoever was helping him out double-crossed you both and killed Boy. The only plan Boy and I ever had was to beat that court case. I'm tired now, Jack. Come on. And I'm telling you as a friend, don't do anything stupid. Grateful. I'm gonna have to sell my car, I guess. Not that it's worth much. Maybe get a few more hours overtime. Anyway, thanks. Well, well uh, what do you do for a job? I'm a picture framer. Uh, I got a few photos that uh, could do with some framing. <laughs> no, I mean I do. I'm serious. I know you are. That's what's so nice. Thank you very much, Chopper. You're a champion. See ya. Hey, Chief. Listen, I just spoke to Chopper about Boyd Driscoll's autopsy. You mean you're snooping? Yeah, I was snooping, all right? And you know what he said? He found some car paint on Boyd's jacket. Car paint, car paint. No, I'm not seeing the relevance here, Mick. One of Charlie's old associates I spoke to is Johnny Peters. He's a panel weeder. He's a fry, you want Right yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll... Get on to it. Make sure you keep homicide informed. Sure. Yeah, jackets, Mick. You know anything about car paint? Diminishing fire. I think he's living here since his wife threw him out. Mr. Peters, Sydney Water Police. Jack. Oh, oh. Smells like someone's burning. It's blood. It's like they've tortured him. Charlie got a revenge, all right. Charlie's gone. OK, look, I'll double-check with the airport to make sure the alert's still in place. She knows we'll be looking there. Oh, Jack, she's not Wonder Woman. Look, when we took a statement from Charlie, did we get a mobile number for her? Yes, we got Shira Wilson. That's just as good. They're joined at the hip. I'll also get onto the phone company, see if we can track her with it. Thanks. You ever do this as a mongrel, Alex? One of Charlie's hired help. Yeah, I'd say so. She knows how to pick them. Do you reckon they ripped off Charlie's money? Well, I mean, they've turned the place upside down, so they were looking for something. Yeah. So you reckon this guy cracked and he, he told them where he hid the money? Who knows? He wouldn't have hid it here. So what are we looking for, Michael? A key, locker tag, maybe a receipt. Look, anything that's going to lead us to Charlie's little nest egg. Yeah. Let's hope she's got it switched on. I'm in business. Phone's turned on.
That's the code for the Camperdown Exchange. She's somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. Can't you get a bit of fix than that? Only if she starts moving. The phone logs on to a different base station she goes. That way we can give you an approximate direction that she's headed. Looks like they've just turned the phone off. No. Sorry. Meek, is there any reference to Camper down in the office? Nah, nothing on Camper down so far, Jack. All right, keep me posted if anything turns up. Yeah, sure. Hey, Michael. Oh, hang on a minute, hang on. What do you got there? Satellite self storage, Camper down, Piermont Bridge Road. All right, we've got a packing box from Satellite self storage, Piermont Bridge Road, Camper down. Right. Okay, we'll see you there. Bye. Let's go, Al. Yeah, hold on. Satellite storage said that Chawney went to locker number 24 at their Camperdown facility. It's on the ground floor. OK, police are on their way now. OK, copy that. Charlie's got a nest there, Jack. These guys got here before us. Did you see her? No, look, she's been and gone. Jack. You must have seen her. The airports and seaports have all been alerted. Interstate bus terminals? Oh, yeah, taxis, trains, domestic airports, all done. We seem to be forgetting this woman around a major passport scam. She has access to any amount of identity she wants. Okay, what, do you, what do you suggest, Jack? Jack! Jack! Come on, why don't you tell us what Charlie's going to do? You know it better than hey, us. Hey, Christy. I always killed for a reason, you know that. All this time, Charlie. And you're still trying to convince me. I left you a present. It's in your letterbox. Don't ever make it, Charlie. We got you covered. He saved my life. I still owe you one. We'll find you, Charlie. I'll find you. Goodbye, Jack. Jack, don't! Jack, Jack, it could be a bomb. Don't touch it. She's at the bloody airport. Now that's what she wants you to think, Jack. It's a setup. She's been playing you all along. It's a game. Nah, Mick, this is the final insult. She's feeding me information because she thinks she's won. We're going to the airport. She's getting on a bloody plane, Jack. Yeah, Riley. Oh, yeah, Mick. Listen, local boys think they've sighted Charlie. Okay, it's about Charlie, Jack. Yeah, uh, a maxi taxi has just dropped off a woman matching her description at Fisherman's Wharf. Well, she was in a wheelchair, so. Okay, thanks, Helen. Look, Charlie's getting on a boat. OK, Fisherman's Wharf. I told you, Jack. Water attack. We picked her up about 15 minutes ago. No specific destination. Just told to go straight for the heads. They're going to have to change over to an ocean-going launch if they want to get through the heads. Well, hang on. There's a cruise ship that's out there at the moment that's leaving tonight. But once she gets into international waters, that's it. We can't touch her. All right, Scotty, step on it. Hang on, Jack. <laughs> This is the Sydney Water Police. I repeat, this is the Sydney Water Police. Yes, sir. Your hands, your hands away from the wheel. Where is she? Nowhere you'll find her. I want you, Sheriff. Aiding and abetting. Seven years. I hope the flat was worth it. Mick. There's no crime against wearing a wig, is there? My lawyer's going to tear you apart.
Yeah, right. Uh. Come on. Don't worry about him. Yeah, it's not much he's worried about, Gav. You know, coppers everywhere. It's a bit scary. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Do you want a drink? Um, you know, yeah. What do you want? Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> hey, Al. Hey. Get to. Hey, James. Yeah. Beer, please. You see Jack? No, oh, he's disappeared. Can't say I blame him. I just spoke to the doctor that treated Charlie after her accident. Mm -hmm. He said that she was a partial quad. Meaning? In short, she could have regained use of her legs. It's possible. Oh, what, so next week she's running a marathon? <laughs> Want a beer? Oh. No. No, we've got to get going. His Highness here, he's doing a project for uni. He has to interview someone. I'm his coachwoman. Well, you can come back if you like. It's just up the road. Mate, I don't even want to drive your car across the road. No way. See you, well, why don't you just drop him off and come back? See how we go. Come on. Hey, Matt. Hey, Nick. You're on your own, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll get used to it. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. <laughs> you know, I've been dreaming about Rachel lately. Oh, not just dreaming, I... I see her. I talk to her. It's crazy stuff. But you know, whenever I thought about Rachel, she was always there, crystal clear. But now, when I think about her, it's like, It's like she's fading. You know, I held her in my arms when she was dying, you know. I, I held her in my arms and... Even that's fading. It's like I'm forgetting about her. giving up on it. Maybe you're just a cold bastard with a really bad memory. Jack, you've got to remember that letting go is very different to forgetting. Hmm? Do you reckon should wear a suit to this thing. So it'll be good. Yep. Can't believe Charlie got away from us. Who? Oh, Charlie Driscoll. Who's he? <laughs> Who's, who's he?